Let's check out our first artist, Lauren Semivan, who uses a camera that dates back to the era of the Model T to create some very interesting prints. The photographer Jeff Wall talks about photographers as being either hunters or gatherers, and I definitely identify with the gatherer rather than the hunter. The large format view camera that I use dates from the early 20th century, and it's a very simple kind of primitive camera, which it's basically a box with a lens and a ground glass on the other end. So I have a large piece of black velvet that I use as a dark cloth to block out the light so that I can see the image that I'm photographing. And the camera takes eight by 10 negatives. So the negative is much larger than say a 35 millimeter or even medium format negative. And so as a result, there's much more capacity for detail. Often what I'm looking for as I'm photographing is a way to kind of suspend time itself or to be able to say something that can't be said without the film and the act of photographing. Sometimes I'll start with an idea based on literature and then the composition evolves from there. All my photographs are made in the same studio and they're incorporating painting and drawing and found objects and sometimes the figure as a narrative tool. The set sort of evolves until it sort of devolves into the next picture. And so I kind of, I really enjoy how the process is this continuous organic moment from one image to the next. This is an example of a set that was really pretty precariously constructed. So these are individual little sticks that were kind of pressed into the, the backdrop against the tool fabric. I kind of enjoy the element of it could all fall apart at any moment. As I'm working, my concept of time is a little bit different in that everything is much slower pace and there's a really intense kind of element of composition in working with the large format camera. You can sort of go under this black cloth and then see what you're photographing upside down and backwards, so it's sort of transposed in a way and removed from reality even further. So that always really interested in me that I was sort of creating a, a totally new space that didn't exist in reality and that could only exist through the camera. And then that the finished product is not something that is really visible or even I'm conscious of what's going to happen until I can see the final print or the, the negative. I have two sizes, one is 40 by 50, that size is quite large and it's almost a one-to-one -one scale relationship with the viewer. And then the other way that I work is by contact printing the 8x10 negative to make a cyanotype. So the cyanotypes are made on basically a, a watercolor paper and the emulsion is a mixture of two different light sensitive chemicals. So I mix them together and then you hand coat the paper with the emulsion and then you allow the paper to dry in the total darkness. When the paper's dry, you can print the negative directly in contact with the paper in the sunlight. You leave the, the print in the sun for your exposure and then you can wash it in water and then you have your cyanotype. The show that I recently had at David Klein Gallery was titled Door Into the Dark. And to me, this idea is more about the creative process as a pursuit of the unknown. The creative process is something that kind of connects people through time and space. And also, I think that as, we're, as artists are making things, we don't necessarily always know what we're doing or what we're looking for, but we feel the need to keep to create the, the thing you know, and to keep making it. So I feel the process is sort of the door into the dark. The painter Pierre Soulage talks about his black paintings as being more just representative of the forms that are in the paintings rather than about other ideas or, you know, they're non-representational, so they really can't be described in language. And I think a lot of art is that way. And that's the strength of art is that we can't necessarily always explain or identify what may be happening when we look at a, a painting or any kind of image. So I would say that I hope that my viewer is able to kind of enter the photograph 
and have questions and things to think about and want to be in that space, but maybe not necessarily have a way out of the space so that they can feel, relate to it enough to sort of understand, but then maybe their questions are what keep them there, or keep them looking at the piece. Maybe some people are more comfortable knowing the answers and others are comfortable with not understanding exactly what is happening, but being in, engaged in it at the same time. You can learn more about Lauren Semivan as well as all the artists we feature on DetroitPerforms.org.